College football, big game preview, week number nine. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six awesome sports books down there. Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Fitz Casino, Hollywood, First Jackpot. They got all the information over at tunicatravel.com. Go check that thing out. You can also check out our website, all of our podcasts, YouTubes, all that stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. We got everything you need, so go check that thing out. If you're on YouTube... Hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on the podcast, hit that subscribe button. Give us some reviews. Five stars, please. Absolutely. And then you can always follow us on Twitter and uh, Facebook, all those, all the wonderful social media stuff where you can keep up with us. Let's jump into game number one. Georgia and Florida. Now, did you think that this would be the biggest game of this weekend when like, everything came out initially? Well, define initially, like before the season started? Before, before the season. No, because I didn't think Florida was going to be that impressive. And now Florida's a top 10 team. Correct. Ranked number nine in the AP poll. Correct. Uh, Florida's 6-1 and one against the spread this year. That, that is also correct. That's uh, that's It surprises me a little bit. Georgia's a 7.5 point favorite. Over-under is 52.5. It's Saturday, 2.30 p.m. on CBS in Jacksonville. Uh, look, turnover margin... Like, Florida is plus nine on the year. Like, they've had a whole lot of turnover luck this year. Um, both teams can run the ball. Like, they're both averaging over five yards a carry. They're both averaging about 200 yards rushing. Um, they can both pass the ball. Like, Georgia, surprisingly, 9.2 passing yards per attempt. Florida's only 7.9 on that one. Both defenses are insane. Yep. Both of them give up only 4.2 rushing yards per attempt. Both of them give up five point. Well, Georgia gives up five point four. Florida gives up five point six uh, passing yards per attempt. This is going to be a close game. Yeah, it's about as close as it comes. The difference maker here is if Fromm can continue to look good and not look like he looked when LSU was playing him. I think he's going to be the difference maker. Felipe Franks has still not had a great game from start to finish. No, he hasn't. He hasn't. Uh, and I like. I have to find a way. You can't make mistakes against Georgia. Exactly. I I gotta quit. Just not having any faith at all in Felipe Franks because it, every game this year I'm like, yeah, but he's probably going to turn the ball over a bunch and he's going to do this and that. But he but, does. And here's the thing: other other than the Kentucky game. He he still made all the mistakes he was supposed to make to lose him the game. Yeah. Just the rest of the team picked him up. The defense picked him up big against LSU. Uh, the, running know, the, running, the running game has really supported The running game has really carried a lot of the weight there. And I just get scared about being one-dimensional against really good teams like uh, Georgia. Well, and see, that's – yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that Georgia can make him really uncomfortable – but I say that, and, and Georgia has not gotten a ton of pressure on quarterbacks this year. No, like they, no. they just don't have the same playmakers that they had last year. Well, But I don't know that they're running that kind of – I think they're trying to stop the run and then just, just saying, beat us. We're going to play you man-to-man. We're going to cover your, your receivers. Beat us. Because there's a, it's not like there's five-star NFL receivers all over the place either. No, you're right. You're and right. Felipe Franks, you kind of want to keep him in the pocket. And just the, let him throw. The seven and a half was the opening line. Uh, right now, over at the Horseshoe, the Horseshoe uh, Casino and Tunica provided the lines this week. Georgia is a seven point favorite, so it did come down half a point. Everybody bet down the hook. Um, I mean, if, if you had to, if you had to take this one, what would you do over under? Who are you going with on the spread? On the spread, I would take Georgia. I think I'd probably go with Florida. I like Georgia. I don't see Kirby Smart losing two games back to back. I think I don't know that they would lose the game. I so, just I think it could be a closer. Uh, at some point in time, he's going to realize we we're running the wrong running back, and as soon as he figures out we need to give Holyfield the ball thirty times a game, there's there's nobody in the country that's going to stop them. You might be right. I, I believe that. I watched that guy go up against the best run defense I've seen all year in LSU, and when he touched it. He got whatever he wanted. When Swift came in the game, he got well, Swift nothing. Swift is uh, he smaller. Got nothing. Right? He's but, a but smaller I don't, guy. I just don't understand Georgia. Like, I, I can't figure out how Kirby doesn't see what I'm seeing from a couch. Now, that I don't know. 
That I do not know. And and he only got like eight. Maybe he doesn't have endurance. Maybe the guy's just crazy strong but really out of shape. I don't know. I, I would be shocked if that was the case, your dad being a boxer. I mean, those guys are in great shape. Yeah, you're right about that. But, like, I just can't figure out why he touches the ball eight times a game when he gets eight yards every time he touches it. I would say, no, we're going to let you touch it 30 times a game. And yeah. then we're going to just smother the other team. They'll never touch the field. It'll be Army football all over again, but but really fun Army football. I, I could get with you. I think I'd probably roll with Florida uh, just because that line looks really high. And I think Florida, it, they got some revenge stuff coming on this week because, I mean, Georgia rubbed their nose in it last year. Yeah, but – 42-7 last but year. But the difference is, is Mullins wasn't there for that nose rubbing. Okay? And, no, but and those Dan, players were. And if and if anybody's gonna kind of like like the smell of their own crap, it's Dan Mullins. And I think the fact that they're looking as good as they are and they've gotten the top ten, man, I've watched that guy do it at Mississippi State. He gets to dance and he gets to having a good time, and he doesn't prepare. His old teams at State used to do that all the time. Number one in the country got all the way up to, and then just fell flat. Lost three, four games late. Just doesn't. That that's that's his move. That's his move as a coach. Do I think he'll be the most prepared guy? No. I think Kirby will be far more prepared than Mullins. Uh, over under 52 and a half. I, I would go under. I think I'd probably I go under. I do not too. see a lot of points scored in this game. Neither do I. And and let's move on to the next game. Okay. Whole, uh, maybe not a lot of points in this one either. <laughs> uh, Iowa at Penn State. Penn State a six and a half point favorite. At the horseshoe right now, Penn State is a five point favorite as of Tuesday morning. Uh, obviously, these lines will change over at the horseshoe, so go up to your tenant and uh, and make sure you got the latest line before you start putting money down. Uh, but six and a half at uh, at some of the offshore books and, and some of the Vegas books and whatnot as of right before we went on. Uh, people are betting up Penn State. Line opened up at five and a half. Um, over under 53 at Saturday, 2.30 p.m., same time as Georgia, Florida. This one's on ESPN. It's in Happy Valley. Iowa is six and one against the spread this year. Uh, Penn State is four and three. Look, six and one Iowa. Like I, I don't think people are really prepared for Iowa to be good. Like you remember a few years ago when Iowa was undefeated, like heading into the Big Ten championship game, yeah. and everybody was like, "When do we start talking to our kids about an undefeated Iowa?" Like that's kind of what we got here. This defense is legit. Like they are really, really for real. They uh they only give up four yards a carry. They give up 165 rushing yards a game. I mean, they, like this team. Oh, I'm sorry. They give up 2.7 yards per carry. They give up 80 yards rushing a game. Um, yeah. I mean, they're like, they give up 178 passing yards a game, but like a lot of that's in garbage time. Like it's th- this is a legit team. Penn State. They play to the level of competition. Like we can say that they'll be ready for this game. They'll be hyped for this game, and they'll play well in this game. I, I think you're probably right uh, because, like, they played at a level of competition. Yep. Do you think that Iowa can keep this thing? Well, oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Do I think they can keep it close? Yeah. I mean, I could also win the game. see. Oh, yeah. I think they can win the game, too. But I also could see Iowa, I mean, uh, Penn State winning by 10. I mean, I can see Iowa winning by 10. Nothing yeah. would shock me in this game. The best defense that Penn State has played all year was Michigan State. That's right. And Michigan State beat them in Happy Valley. Snuffed them out pretty good. They yeah. couldn't move the ball at all. Held them to uh, to seventeen points. Like it was it was punt that, fest. That was an that was an eleven a.m. game though, man. Yeah, this is a two thirty game. It's a bit, I know it's a little it's bit different. different. I know it's not a little different. But uh, it's, yeah, it's and, and Michigan State different. finds a way to win games like that. But so does Kirk Ferentz. I was just about to say, Kirk Ferentz is a really good coach. This will be a fun game to watch. I'll yeah. I'll be watching a lot of this game. I do agree there. I I think. Under 53? Yeah, I'd go under. I think I'd go under as well. Uh, I think I could go way under that. Like, I think this could be another 21-17 kind of game. I mean, that wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't it, shock me. Either. It would shock me if it was a 30-35 to 35 game. I mean, that yeah. would shock me. Uh, Washington State at Stanford. Game number three are over-unders 55-and-a-half. Stanford a two-and-a-half point favorite on the farm. Uh, it's Saturday, 6 p.m. This one, Pac-12 Network. Do you get the Pac-12 network? I I don't I don't think so. I'm gonna have to find a stream. I have somewhere. Direct TV. I mean, I've, if it's on Direct TV's 
you know, package for our region, then I get it. But I don't think I don't think you get it. I don't think I get it. I don't think you get. I don't think the majority of the country gets this. Like the Pac-12, That's sad. It, it, what what they have done? It, you want all? Uh, you always talk about stuff being borderline criminal. Yeah, this is borderline criminal to put Washington State, who just captured the hearts of the college football country, big national TV, early morning, all day. We got to watch them. Then we got to watch the game that night. Yeah, and and now this week, the, ah, we're going to put you on the Pac-12 network. They're playing a ranked team. And yeah. we, can't, we can't get the game. We can't watch the game. I mean, I, obviously, I will find a, a stream somewhere. Bootleg Gary over here. But, I, I mean, I, that's the only way I'll be able to watch it. Like, I I, it, I don't know. It's just it's so irritating. Um, how do you feel about this? I mean, Washington State, like, that is a, uh, a legit team. They uh, they only give up 23 points a game. They are 7-0 and against the spread this year. Stanford's 4-3 and against the spread. Uh, Washington State 6-1 and straight up, 5-2 and straight up for Stanford. Uh, Stanford doesn't score a lot of points, but this they don't give up a lot of points. This is going to snuff out Stanford. You think so? The boys at Mike Leach, they're going to go on the road. They're not going to get too big for themselves. I know that, Coach. They're not going to believe in their own, their own headlines. Okay. Hey. I think they're going to be ready for this game. I think this game is going to have huge implications for the Pac-12 North. Uh, now, check this out. Rushing yards per attempt. Washington State gives up 3.8. Stanford gives up 4. Is that insane to you? Yeah, Stanford but, only only rushes for 3.1 yards per attempt themselves. Yeah. No, I, Stanford I'm not can't run the ball. Rushing. I'm going to tell you that Washington is not going to run the ball yet. they just going to sling that thing. Oh, they will. They will. Uh, Washington State averages 400 passing yards per game. Correct. Um, and it, it, what's funnier about that is it's only 7.5 passing yards per attempt. Oh, yeah. So, which means they throw it everybody, 60 times a game. Like, yeah, everybody crazy. touches the ball. And so Gardner Minshew last week became a, uh, a folk superstar, basically. Um, he was, what, 39 out of 51 with four touchdowns? Big game. I mean, big game. The mustache is a huge thing up there uh, in the Palouse. Uh, I mean, if I had to go with it, like, I, the only thing that worries me is how emotional last week was, right? Last week was super stuff. emotional, uh, but I do I, – I just don't think Stanford is great. Listen, I've – I've lost money on better. I'm going to be betting Wazoo. Yeah, that makes sense. Way. I mean, you know me and Leach. Yeah, you you rolling money line, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the thing that could shift this game um, turnover margin. Stanford is plus five on the year. Washington State's minus two. And, and, and Washington, I was just about to say, Washington's going to give the ball away. I mean, they're going to give you a couple opportunities, a couple extra possessions, but that defense shut them down. They they continue to do it. Um, while they are minus two, I, I would venture to say that most of the times when they turn the ball over, they don't give up points. Um, You're probably that, right. And that's a big deal. I, that's, I, I did not that's look at a, That's a big deal. Points off uh, turnovers. Um, that defense is real. I don't see Stanford scoring a lot. Now, they'll be able to throw the ball a little, and they'll be able to score some. Yeah. But but I think this defense is good. I think this I, might be the best defense Stanford's played, and that's – they went on the road to Notre Dame. That's a pretty good defense. Yeah, Utah's pretty good. Uh, yeah. I mean, they only scored 21 points. But they, they get this at the home. They get it home. They, they played Utah at the road, and they played Notre no, Dame they, on they the No, they played road. Stanford at home. I mean, they played Utah at home. Oh, they played them at home? Yeah. I thought they, and, and they got Utah. They got stomped. Oh, yeah, they got stomped at home. Uh, next game up, game number four. One of our favorite games. South Florida at Houston. Houston, a seven and a half point favorite. The over under is so juicy. seventy four points. I mean, it's so many points. Uh, it's Saturday, two thirty p.m. ABC in Houston, Texas. Look, I don't trust Major Applewhite, but this Houston team, it like it. You can tell the difference between they put up this a Houston lot team. Of points last week. It, they so Houston averages forty eight point seven points per game. Now they also give up twenty nine. Correct. They are four and three against the spread, six and one straight up. South Florida seven and zero oh straight up, and two and five against the spread. Uh, both teams are in the plus as far as turnover margin. Um, Houston just, I mean, they put up insane numbers. Just South bonkers. Florida puts up insane numbers. And not to the level that that Houston does. Okay. Like it's it's close. 
Still but, crapping on Charlie Strong. I'm telling you. Man, man look, this guy. I I think that Houston could really like go all out here. I think they could really, really like destroy South Florida in this game. Wow. Destroy them. Yes. Destroy I them. think they could beat South Florida by three touchdowns. Okay. I think. Now I I don't I don't think it will happen because I do believe that Blake Barnett and that bunch after laying a dud and and barely coming out with a win against Connecticut last week, I mean they won thirty eight to thirty over a, a complete garbage team. Um, so you may see every now and then you'll say that about a team, and then when 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 they do another team you like does it, you say, well they were looking ahead to somebody else. That game didn't matter. Wh- which is there's no consistency whatsoever in that. See, I never care what they did the week before because what they did the week before is irrelevant. I look at because this team has been preparing all year for something, and if they have a bad game or if they have a good game, it does not dictate what they are going to do the week after unless something happened injury wise. How about this? But before the season at, started, there's no way on earth this is a seven point line. This is a complete overreaction to Houston blowing up last week and South Florida looking bad last week, and it's completely Well, it's Houston just didn't total even blow up last week. The Houston Houston beat Navy thirty uh, forty nine to thirty six. Well, they scored four. They scored almost fifty points. Yeah, but they score almost fifty points every game. Okay. Like they're averaging forty eight point seven game. Uh, point forty eight point yeah. seven points. They a game. score a lot. You're right. Yes. Uh, but they do that against teams that can't hold the ball. That 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 doesn't. They're not going to score fifty this week. Hey, you might because be right. they're playing an off. They might win the game. They might cover the line. But you're playing another offense that's going to take possessions away from you because you're going to be on the sidelines. Because this offense is good too. That's the problem. Let me let me tell that's you. That's how that's how all these big over unders never come in. Never, because Here's, the other offense is on the field a lot, too. So last year, Houston, nobody really thought, oh, they're you know a, dy- a, a great dynamic football right. team, right? But Derek King, like their, their quarterback, mm-hmm. he was all right last year under what they were running then. Then Houston goes and steals Kendall Bryles away from Lane Kiffin, and Florida Atlantic has fallen apart. Like, they are 3-4 and four this year. Offense can't do nearly what they did last year, and now Houston, Houston are the like they're the team that is putting up the huge points, all that kind of stuff. It, South Florida needs to come ready for this game. Like they don't need to pull a Tulsa, but I think they will be ready for this game, and, and they might be. But the last two weeks against you don't think Tulsa, they got film on Kendall Bryles in this offense. They don't know what they're walking into. I think everybody does, and they still give up that many points. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm not saying they're going to stop them. But I'm I'm just making the point that the other team is preparing as well. They've got game film on them as well, and they're actually a good team. They're not Navy. They're not Tulsa. They're they're not these garbage teams. Uh, okay, they're a good okay. team. That's a totally totally fair point. Totally fair point. Um, you you take Major Apple White, and I'll take Charlie Strong, and we'll see who comes out on top more times than not. Okay, that sounds good to me. Uh, let's move off that one. Let's do Wisconsin. Wisconsin minus six and a half at Northwestern. Over under fifty one and a half. Saturday, eleven a.m. Fox in Evanston, Illinois. Who? This is for like the uh, the lead in the Big Ten West. Yeah, I mean, I was. <laughs> well, no, there's have no a lot like. Yeah, it's that. like. I, yes, I'm with you, but like. I mean, you talk about how how great Iowa is. Then then you're gonna talk about these two teams. And no, I said I was it's not for the there. lead. Okay. It's because, like, look, Wisconsin owns the tiebreaker over Iowa. Correct. And Northwestern is undefeated in the Big Ten. That's right. So. Okay. You're right. You know, I mean, this is a, this is a huge deal here. It is a big game. Like, it, it, Northwestern is 4-3 and three straight up, 3-4 three and four against the spread. Wisconsin's 2-5 and five against the spread, but 5-2 and two straight up. You but look the, at these but numbers. Those, those spreads have been pretty damn big. Yeah, no, they've been huge. But like, even still, Northwestern has looked. It, they've played to the level of competition. They're right? playing to the level uh, of competition. Northwestern averages twenty four point three points per game, and they give up twenty four point six points per game. Look, our boys <laughs> at West Lot love them to death. Listen, you go in a Rucker, and you and you come out with like a field goal win. 
you you don't just go into Piscataway, New Jersey, yes, and you come do. out with. I know everybody, everybody else does. does. Everybody does except you for and me. Western. Might be able to put together fifty people that we know that we're friends with and go up to <laughs> go up to Piscataway in New Jersey and get a W. The uh, the like I I would fully expect Northwestern to like keep this game close, right. right? Because they. They do They'll it be ready all for the this time. Game. This could easily have been just a look ahead from last week to this. It's week. it's entirely possible. Yeah. Like it, they knew they didn't even have to really load up the bus with all their stuff. Like my to, my to get problem the win. is is the last three or four games I watched this team a lot because we like those guys and I like watching them. And I've, and I've liked Pat Fitzgerald for a long time. He's, if you're a Northwestern fan, that's got to drive you insane. He's driving me insane the last three weeks. Just driving me insane watching him coach this team. Yeah, I, I don't know what it's like practice wise, but his game plan during the game, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I'm sure that guy's a lot smarter than I am, but it doesn't make sense to this Neanderthal. No, I'm I'm with you. Oh, I'm 100 percent with you. It didn't make any sense at all what they did last week, uh, what they did against Nebraska, Nebraska even, the like week I, before, like and still found a way to win that game. Oh. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand. Um, the line, it's so we said six and a half. That's the latest line. Uh, as of Tuesday morning at the Horseshoe, it was six. As always, go check with your attendant. Uh, I would expect Northwestern to keep this game close, but look, they cannot run the ball. Northwestern averages 2.3 yards per carry. Uh, Wisconsin, I mean, dude. That's like, all they, they do is that's run That's all the ball. they do. They, they average 280 rushing yards a game, 6.3 yards per carry. Uh, but Northwestern could throw the football, and Wisconsin can't really stop that. So, I mean, we'll we'll see how it works. It should be a fun game. I think both teams are going to be fired up, ready to go. And you're right; it is for the lead at the, at the moment in, in the Big Ten West. It's an 11 a.m. game. Uh, I'm sure that it will be nice and cloudy and in a nice Big Ten Over, atmosphere, overcasty, like where where the sky looks like cement, right? Let's see. Let's jump into the honorable mentions. We'll roll through these really fast. Uh, Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. game, ESPNU. It's a little under the radar, but still a fantastic football game if you are a football purist. App State minus 8.5 at Georgia Southern. These are two really good teams, two 6-1 and one teams. Uh, both teams are 6-1 and one against the spread. They are really, really good. Um, I mean, that's that's all you can say about it. Like, Who are you liking that game? I think I like App State. You like App State minus eight and a half. I do. I like App State minus eight and a half. I do as well. My I got uh, money on that. They, that's ditto. It's not a gambling pick. Not one of my I gambling got, picks. I got money but on it. Yeah. Uh, Friday night, six p.m. ESPN. This would have been a a big game if maybe Wisconsin Northwestern wasn't here, and if maybe this game was on Saturday. Miami minus three and a half at Boston College. Is I'm, Dillon I'm, play? Exci- I'm excited about this game, but I, I follow BC a little closer than most people. I like him a lot. I like Mark Rick. I think he's good, but man, I don't know. I, I like BC here, man. I I think I do, too. Like, in, in the metrics. Uh, and I like the weekday games. The midweek games was just Friday. It still counts. It's not a Saturday game. The home underdog. The home, the home team. Even if it's not an underdog. I just like the, the home team usually on these weekday games comes fired up. Yeah, no, you're right. They come out storming. So uh, let's talk about another home team that might come out fired up. Clemson minus fourteen at Florida State, eleven a.m. ABC. Florida State has looked a little bit better the past few weeks. Uh, last week they just boat raced Wake Forest. Uh, don't know that I expected that, but Wake Forest has kind of fallen apart here. Florida State cannot run the football. No, and and God bless if you can't do that. Like if your offensive line is. Just awful at giving up tackles for loss and well, giving Clemson's up sacks. Defensive line, the best yeah. in the country. Clemson is going to murder somebody. Yep. Uh, so you know, we'll we'll see. Like Florida State has talent, and it feels like Willie Taggart is getting that thing rolling a little bit. But they're beating up on little guys. Let's see if they can compete with but, the big boys. But Clemson is yeah. they they hit another level after their bye week. They're not Wake Forest. Who you got that right? All right, the last uh, three no four games. Four six p. Well, they, there were a lot of honorable mentions. Uh, six p.m. ESPN Texas A and M at Mississippi State. State is a three point favorite. Uh, this will be the best run defense that State has played all year. State coming off of a bye or off of a uh, a game against LSU. A and M coming off of a bye. Um. That's in my game of picks. We'll we'll get to that one later. 
11 a.m. ESPN 2, Texas Tech at Iowa State. Iowa State's a four and a half point favorite over Texas Tech. Alan Bowman, British comedy legend, will be back, <laughs> as the solid verbal guys would say. Uh, they uh, This should be an interesting game, I think. Like, Iowa State has looked unbelievable. And now we get to see if Cliff Kingsbury and those guys are for real, because if they do it on the road... This week at Iowa State, like doing it at a, a flailing TCU team is like one thing. Yep. Doing it at Iowa State, who is hitting their stride, that would be something completely different. Uh, another 11 a.m. game on ESPN, Purdue plus two at Michigan State. After that beatdown over Ohio State, they are an underdog in East Lansing to a team that just got less than 100 yards of total offense against Michigan. Yeah, this team... Uh... You can't overreact to what happened the week before. Agreed. You just can't overreact. I will be watching a lot of this game as well. There's a lot of eyes are going to be on this one. Yeah, yeah, they certainly will be. Uh, and I'm a big Brom fan. Finally, last honorable mention game, Notre Dame minus 23.5 at Navy. This game is in San Diego. Late night CBS game. Kind of yeah. surprising. I mean, Navy, his, Navy's got the TV rights to this one. We talk about this because it's a historic game. But other than that, you know... Do you think Notre Dame beats them by 23 and a half? That's a big number. That's a huge number. There, there is a part of me that thinks no, just kind of, not because they can't, but because they won't. That's that's kind of what I You think, think that? I mean, is that? I mean, I think they, they get up by three touchdowns. I think they'd leave it there. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what I think. Well, I mean, I think they try. They just put in some, they pull book, they pull everybody. You know, they just. Yeah. So. So, and then if Navy don't, starts don't to get, get any close, Don't get anyone hurt. Basically, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, that's going to wrap up the college football big game previews for week number nine.